Uh, as we look at the visions um, uh, last week in the second survey, some of you asked good questions about you know all the technological things that we might be developed that enhance our ability to see that. Uh, remember, this is a, a series of teaching. We really lay the foundational uh, basis for why uh, the Bible says all are able to develop and see visions. We really done that. So if you're hearing this message for the first time, refer back back to that. We don't repeat those stuff and uh, so where we are today is in uh, this series of spiritual visions is to help train each one of us to see uh, visions and uh, basically what we have covered so far is that number one visions and thoughts are the same law if you have thoughts some of your thoughts are from yourself some of your thoughts are from the enemy, some of your thoughts are from God. So all you have to do is filter out your thoughts so that you can recognize which are from God. And which are from your, your spirit man, which might be good thoughts. And then, of course, reject all the enemy's thoughts. But many times people think that every thought they have is theirs. So how do you differentiate between a thought that is not supposed to be yours? Okay, not always true, but you got to know the negative and the positive. Positive is very easy. Thoughts that are in line with the Bible, thoughts that are in line with the Word of God, thoughts that are in line with our Lord Jesus Christ, thoughts that glorify Jesus Christ, thoughts that are in the perfect will of God, thoughts that are in line with the principles of the Bible, thoughts that um, are, are filled with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meaning, temperance, all those thoughts in that category are, of course, close in the dimension of God or reveal the nature of God. Thoughts that are from the enemy, fear, hate, selfish indulgence, things that break and are opposite from the law of uh, love, uh, love God and to love your neighbor. So remember, those are the extreme thoughts. Some of those seem to be from people whose lives are not so developed. Like for example, it could be human thoughts. Because some humans are really terrible. But actually, if you could eyes to open, you will see that fundamentally, all humans were created with goodness in their heart. And only because we come under the influence of spirits. I use the word influence, not necessarily possession. People get used to a certain level of thinking. And so they come under the domain of darkness. The Bible puts everyone who is not born again, subject under the enemy. Of course, here and there, here and there, they're good people. Like Cornelius is a good person, and didn't know Jesus yet. And the Roman centurion, there are a lot of good people here and there. But it's because they tune into the Spirit of God. Remember what Jesus says? No man can come to me except that the Spirit draw him. Correct? Didn't Jesus say that? So, you got to see it this way. Everyone is under domain of darkness as long as Jesus is not there. But once in a while, there are people sensitive to the thoughts of God. To the Spirit of God. So when they tune into it, they are slowly led towards God. So Jesus can say, everyone who came is because somewhere along the Spirit has led them to thoughts, to vision. So everyone is under the domain of darkness, which is why generally the world's thoughts are negative. And they are negative because they are actually under demonic influence, without knowing it. The worst case scenario of demonic influence is fear, hatred, anger, self-indulgence. These are basic things that are there. The moment you have any thoughts in the area, Wake up, it's not you. And stop it where it is. Because the further you go into that, the further you yield to the enemy. So the first thing you ask is, when a thought is very dominant in your consciousness, is there fear? Is there hate? 
Is there self-indulgence? Because that's what the devil wants you to do. The lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Is there pride involved in that? If there is, wake up. You have just been under influence of the enemy. And fundamentally, humans are created to be good. So, but if they yield long enough, then of course the enemy has a long stock barrel. So n- recognize what is good thoughts, what is bad thoughts. And generally, most of the thoughts that come from yourself are more <coughs> activity thoughts. Just activity thoughts. Uh, and there might be some concerns here and there, but there's always a little bit of love at the human level, concerns at the human level, care at the human level, all these are uh, in the domain, domain, plus desires at the human level, aspirations, and maybe all these other things. So remember those divisions. Now, apply it to visions. Everyone has the ability of imagination. And we have found that there is an imagination that's in your spirit and imagination that's in your soul. And everyone can see pictures. Like right now I say, pink elephant, right? Straight away you got a picture. So straight away you can see a picture. Although there's no such thing as a pink elephant. But you really create a picture in your, in your mind, even though it doesn't exist in the natural. Yeah, I think it doesn't exist. Unless anyone, anyone found a pink elephant, let me know. So, pink elephant doesn't exist. And uh, same, like uh, uh, if I say a polka dot horse, also doesn't exist. But your imagination can create it. So there you have it. Inherent inside us is an ability to see. When you have a vision, some people think they must go into it. Then they see a vision. Come on! You are charismatic, you have progressed from Pentecostal charismatic move. How long has the charismatic move been around? 100 years. By now you realize when you speak in tongue, it's as natural as speaking a language. When you speak in tongues, you don't have to like tense your muscle, put your hands in a certain position. Put your leg in a certain position or sit in a certain position and then go come on, come on, come on. You don't have to, right? Correct? You're very relaxed, you just flow, speaking in tongues, speaking in English. It's still a language that flows through you, except you didn't have understanding of the language. Your body posture, your 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 tension, your uh, uh, how loud, how soft, uh, how high, how low, your voice, all these are uh, uh, statistics and technical things they are not essential to the process of speaking in tongues. It's only human beings that make the technical log- logistic process part of it, then something goes wrong with them. So we all can speak in tongues easily and all that. So why do you think seeing visions you got to go into certain posts? What, what can who told you that? Why, why make seeing vision so, so what I call, unnaturally supernatural? When it should be as easy as ABC. It should just be a normal part of your life. And you should be able to train to see the dimension of vision. Which is uh, where we have brought you to the Bible. And uh, here is where I want to start us off first with... Um, Where's my little chart? Here. Okay. This is an area everyone cannot escape. Just like, for example, when you talk. When you talk, you need your voice box. Last week, we talked about the technical thing of seeing and apply that into the spiritual. When you talk, you need your diaphragm to push air. You push air out through your throat and your throat muscles vibrate. And as your throat muscles vibrate, your tongue and your mouth and your lips form the words. These are technically the same whether you're speaking in a known language or you're speaking in tongue. The word of God is glorious 
and wonderful to be spoken. So, whether you speak in tongues, or you speak in English, or other languages, well, I forgot all my other guys, Chan Mei Chu, is it a bit? My Chinese pronunciation terrible. Chan Mei Chu. Oh, Chan Mei Chu, thank you. I miss all the tone. <laughs> Chan Mei Chu. <laughs> Chan Mei Chu. I speak Chin uh, Chinese like English speaker. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, whether I speak Chinese or speak in whatever language or whatever mother tongue you have, you still use your diaphragm. What? You still use the air in your throat. You still use your lips. You still use your mouth to form uh, the words, even though some languages are more specialized in guttural sounds, some the R sound, some the L sound. Uh, they are, each language is weak in certain utterance, but it's still a language that you have to speak. Similarly, when we see visions, your brain wave goes through a standard process. Whether you like it or not, uh, your brain wave is the total uh, overall pattern that your brain forms in an EEG. Uh, with all the neurons bursting and different brain activity uh, being fired, all the synapses of your neurons firing, it goes to different brain waves. And that is a standard. When you sleep, whether you're a highly spiritual man or you are a very natural man or you're born again, not born again, your brain does go to these uh, five different brain waves that are there. And these are the pattern. Uh, basically, your reality in this science article is shaped by your brain waves. And okay, don't subscribe. And so here they're measuring your EEG. And these are the basic things, let me see if I can make it bigger for you. Now, the brain waves are not named in the order of the Greek ABC. Greek LBCV, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. So, unfortunately, they're not named exactly in the right order because of the way they're discovered. So, when they go Alpha waves, it's because that's the first wave that they discover. Then later, they discover Beta. And then, uh, then, uh, then they discover gamma, and then they discover delta, and then theta. These are all the different brain waves that they discover. And so you have a rough calculation. Now I I check different websites and calculation. Some of them use the limit of. Uh, uh, 40 rather than 30, uh, 12 or 14 rather than 13, but that's minor things in the hertz. But here, four, 4 to 8 and below 4, that's quite standard for most uh, different measurements. And so what we have here is uh, actually gamma should be right on top. I don't know where they put it at the bottom. Uh, uh, this one should be on top because this is above 30, so it should be up there. And uh, so the first wave they discover is these uh, waves that they call alpha waves in your brain, which is 9 to 13 uh, hertz. And this one is your physically and mentally relaxed, awake, but drowsy. Remember I talked about between sleep and wake is when you can see things. And technically, Every one of you dream, but not all of you remember your dreams. In the Bible, dreams and vision have been used uh, like uh, synonyms. In the book of Daniel especially, there's a dream and later they call it a night vision. So they use a dream and vision as synonyms, as if they're the same thing. Remember also in the Bible, Moses said, when a prophet or a dreamer or dream arises, so they put the dreamer of dream in an equal position as a prophet seeing visions. That's how the Bible regards dreams. And you know that even though our modern education system and our modern world does not regard dreams as anything significant, it just treats it as something, you know, airy fairy. The Bible does not. Remember, Joseph had a dream. That was from the Lord. And it came to pass. Remember that... Uh, 
Pharaoh had a dream in the Bible. And that dream involved the whole known world at that time. For, it involved 14 years of economic activity or recession in the whole world. That was important as a ruler to pick up what a dream means. And you know, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And that dream takes you right down from the Babylonian kingdom unto the kingdom of God, being established in the days of the Tentos, which is our time. Then, Daniel had a dream, several dreams. And in the New Testament, Joseph had a dream. And in the dream, he met an angel. And the angel told him to take Jesus and Mary and escape to Egypt. If he take the dream lightly, they would have died. So, the Bible does not regard dreams as insignificant. Although the Bible is balanced, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says dream can be caused by activity. So dreams are the same. Some dreams come from yourself. Hopefully, no dreams come from the devil. And some dreams come from God. Obviously, they're still the same, same uh, outline. Same like visions that are there. <clears throat> so, a dream is a vision you receive when you're unconscious. A vision is that which you see when you're conscious. But they are the same technical visual reception that you have. So, the, the alpha, <coughs> alpha phase is quite important. You're physically and mentally relaxed. Remember, two, uh, physically and mentally relaxed. Not just physical, not just mental. You're awake, but slightly drowsy. So this is where you're between sleep and wake. And it could be possible that you go into a dream state. Now I'm going to just take these scientific facts first before I go to the Bible. I will back up things with the Bible. But I need you to have this knowledge so that I can illustrate. It's just like sometimes I use nuclear physics. I've got to explain the nuclear physics then I illustrate. So, or quantum law. Then, uh, then if I take it higher up, let, let me take alpha as a baseline. Then if it increases to 14 to 30 hertz, that is, this is what you are normally when you're thinking and trying to solve a problem. They have put the things uh, on humans and they give them problems to solve. And it, this is your conscious solving a problem. Mathematical problem, solving a problem, uh, trying to do different things, reading different things and all that when you're reading. But gamma, which is above 30, up here, this is which above, is still something new. It's still something new, not fully explored. But the gamma phase is like 30 hertz and above, which is way above. It's like uh, you're fully conscious of everything. Your perception is heightened. Everything tastes better. Everything see clearer. Everything hear clearer. So it's like your highest quantum state of physical activity. I guess if you're playing tennis at the gamma stage, you know, you, every ball hits powerfully. If you are do, playing music at a gamma stage, I guess, you know, you'll be so sensitive to every, every sound that is there. If you're painting, and uh, you'll be sensitive to every nuance of color. And uh, if you are a connoisseur, cooking food, and you're the gamma face, oh, you could taste every grain of salt. And every sniff or smell of sugar. So, gamma is like all your senses are heightened. So, you're fully functioning at a very high state of consciousness. Uh, your quantum state, I would call that. Your, your best, best state. If you are a runner and you're running at the gamma phase, you are a champion. Uh, that's why sometimes an athlete try to hit this phase. So, it looks like they're on a roll. Everything is like they are so perfect, almost like a robotic perfection. And everything functions accordingly. It's a gamma phase. And uh, in my, uh, I will add my opinion afterwards. But my opinion on the gamma phase, I don't think it can be maintained 24 hours. Because it will take a lot of energy. And you've got to try to pick at that level. Which is what many athletes try to do. They pick. 
try to pick. And they try to hit the gamma phase when they are actually running the race. So that goes up. As you go down from alpha, you go down to uh, here from uh, actually here should be uh, oh go down to theta. Whoa, okay, they again put it different. Eh? I think there is something wrong here. Let me see. Dreamless theta, deep consciousness, light stage, delta. Delta, I remember theta is much lower. Wait, ah, okay. Check these guys' facts. From, let me open another one. Where do I open? Yeah, okay. This is easy. Okay, states of consciousness, brain wave, brain wave, frequency. Let me check this guy out. <coughs> Here we have again. Okay, acceptable. Deep sleep, they put delta. Okay, fine. Acceptable. Just double check his facts. Because <coughs> I thought he made an error there. Okay, so that means this is not in order also. They should put theta then to delta. Right, so I, I don't like the way they put. Is it should be thirteen nine? Then the next one should be eight to four. Then the next one should be below four. Right, correct. When you do mathematics, so you could do. I, I will redo the order afterwards. And um, then from alpha, as you relax, you go down to theta. Theta is four to eight hertz. Reduce consciousness, D meditation, and here they discover the theta stage when they were measuring uh, people meditating. So they discovered this very low state. And then when you go into this stage also dreams occur, like sleep, REM sleep. Now the, the fact here is that some people are still conscious to trading at the theta stage. And then below 4 hertz, deep dreamless sleep, loss of bodily awareness. So, there they go below. Now, what else do we have from this guy? Okay, let's uh, look at some of the things he says here in the natural. Alpha is about relaxation, imagination and visualization. Which means that if you are visualizing I remember alpha is relax. Uh, you need to know the basic states. Alpha is relax body, relax mind. Remember that. If you're not relaxed, then you're not alpha. So for the time being, all your names are Mr. and Mrs. Relax Sing. <laughs> you're relaxing. So put on your turbans. You are relaxing. <laughs> and so says here visualizing this slow cycle of brain uh, 7 to 12 hertz uh, beats a second some put 8 he says it's associated, associated with peace safety and is a great state of mind for relieving stress it is also present when people watch movies or television. So sometimes when you're watching a movie, you're being... This is a hypnotic stage. Sometimes you're drawn into it and you're watching because you're not thinking. All the thinking is pushed to you. Which is why sometimes, uh, you know, you're in a semi-hypnotic state uh, uh, in when you're watching something. And it's considered a gateway to deeper realms of consciousness. And here's the other thing I want to point out to the Schumann resonance, which is the vibration frequency of the earth. So the earth is vibrating also in that realm. And uh, so when you have a vibration uh, at that realm, uh, everything is vibrating around us. Remember, I talked about electromagnetic uh, interference. And. Um, I'm uh, not sure how much electromagnetic interference. I did say that I put this app on so that we could measure it here. And um, so you could see that. And um, let's see. 
Okay. So there are many frequencies right now around us. There is an electromagnetic spectrum. You can see there's a. When I face this way, uh, it's facing that way and measuring. There's a whole pool of magnet, uh, uh, electromagnetic wave coming from that direction, and uh, that measures up to. Uh, it measures. Uh, uh, you can see pools and all all, all those there. Uh, here it, it, it measures where our location is, our geolocation, and where is it on that side. And measure as you're facing the front. Okay. Uh, it's picking up where transmitters are. Wi Fi transmitters is in that direction. And uh, since you're seeing up there, I can face anyway. And let's see. So you can see most of it is on this side, on your left side. I like to remember I say you're all being microwave. <laughs> Wait till they come out with 5G, you know. It will be even more. So behind it, uh, different people, all those uh, spark everything, they sell towers all behind. You might not see it when you came in, but they're hiding inside all the buildings, on top of the building. This is how much transmission is all going on behind you. And you pick up every single cell tower that is there. And uh, whoa, there's someone on this side. Oh, can you see there's a, uh, once in a while, there's, uh, can you see that the big bubble again coming? Again, okay, it's coming from that direction. All that. So there's some radiation coming from the, behind you on that side. And once in a while, you see the whole thing filled with thing it's because it's just flowing right through you. And uh, these are all the electromagnetic waves. For, well, that side got some many transmission towers. That's a lot. Now, don't forget, this is only up to 4G and a few 5G. 5G require more. Require more. So, so basically, uh, on this side, look, there's a lot too, on this side. There's big transmissions. And when you walk in this direction here, uh, in that building, you know, you're, this is how you're being microwaved nicely. You know, well cooked uh, in this direction. And uh, of course, not enough to cook an egg or cook you. But basically, these are the transmission that is all there. These are man made transmissions. That man made transmission. And uh, here, uh, it didn't produce a sound. When it's higher, this one also got audio. And you hear the audio signals coming. In my area where I live under about four or five cell tower, you could hear the sounds uh, going on all the time. And a lot of these are not healthy transmissions. They are uh, not your natural body. That's what it says, your body's natural transmission is a Schumann resonance. That is, usually it's about um, uh, seven, seven, eight uh, hertz per second, which is what some of these, this converts all transmission that hits me into the Schumann resonance. So that's what it's doing. And I think you have one there, right? <laughs> okay. So, and, uh, so it converts the transmission into that. And um, uh, more earth friendly. Now, if, you, if the whole world were to lose all its electrical power, and suddenly we have no more electricity, everything will vibrate at the Schumann resonance. That means the natural base that is there. But we have produced a lot of artificial things around. Some people are born more sensitive to electromagnetic waves of different frequency. Some are not so sensitive. But everyone is different and there will be a certain level you're more hypersensitive to. And that's a very strange thing. Just like everyone's brain wave will be slightly different. So you have there, uh, then the beta, as I say, the beta is your normal activity, your brain activity. And that's from 13 to, uh, it, it, it says concentration, cognition, alertness, focus, and uh, all these involve you thinking through solving problems and going through your ideas and all that. And um, then you have your theta, and uh, your theta is uh, uh, between uh, 4 to 7. is associated with meditation, intuition, memory, 
uh, it was first noticed when EEG was applied to meditating monks. This mystical realm is elusive and mysterious since brain activity slows almost to the point of sleep. But not quite. This state brings heightened receptivity and here's the thing, visions. Can you see the word visions? Visions. Flashes of dreamlike imagery, inspiration, your buried memories. And uh, you may feel you're floating or that your spirit is reaching beyond the con container of your body at that stage. You almost get out of body experience. And uh, I would say that when you have a close vision, it is closer to your tita. Now, if you have a dreamlike vision where you're semi drowsy, it's more like an alpha vision. So you can see different stage of your vision. Because alpha is a dreamlike state also, almost drowsy. Then you might have a theta. When you have a theta, it's, it's almost like all the, the physical is gone. It's almost you're fully in, immersed in the spiritual. So it will be closer to a close vision. A close vision. And um, so that is about four to seven hertz, uh, 4.5 beats per second appears uh, to induce a certain state uh, in a person. Let's look at the delta. Delta clocks in at about 0 0.4 hertz, pretty much where we go when we are in deep sleep. And this state is crucial for restoring the body and healing. Delta is, and this one you're, you're knocked out, you're subconscious. The place where, uh, and here is where I believe uh, your deep sleep is. Of course, uh, gamma is something still discovered. It is most recently discovered, and uh, little is known about this state, and still a lot of research that is there. So these are all the different stage that is there, where is REM stage. Now, REM sleep, where you're dreaming, is also at the theta stage, REM. Okay, these are the natural classification. I've been looking at it, as you know, I have several series where I touch on this and I've been uh, uh, teaching on this area, but here is where my conclusions are. And I will look at the Bible too. Oh, wrong one, sorry, this is my songbook. Okay. Okay, is this the final phase? Yes. Now I'm going to do it differently from uh, what you have there. First, I select the middle section. The middle section is the alpha. Alpha. And as you remember, alpha is uh, roughly um, between, they put that 13, so uh, you can put that, um, let's uh, uh, is between uh, because the other one is 13 so it got 12 to 8 12 to 8 Hertz um, 12 to 8 Hertz and um, then when you go upwards let me choose a color for going upwards you have your Delta uh, you have your de uh, Beta sorry your beta, your beta phase, which should be roughly from 13 to 30. Some people put 40, but let's just take this. Hertz. And as you go higher, uh, since they didn't give a limit, gamma, which is uh, from 30 hertz uh, upwards 30 hertz upwards as you go lower you go to theta which is uh, from 7 to 4 and if you go lower below that will be delta 
I don't know why most of the charts don't put it this way. Why right? it should be there? Four hertz, hertz below. So there we have our my chart where it's a more. Uh, this one, uh, okay. Let me put it this way. Where is my different color? Okay. I would like to start alpha as the middle section. The middle section. Obviously, from what is spoken there, you should be able to see some visions at this point and since this is REM sleep at this point and you should be able to see also at this point these are all my my addition you won't find it from books this way me studying looking at it now the delta phase you know your knockout your sleeping and uh, this sleep and the brain activity is very low gamma state still to be determined but I believe because at that time you are also uh, fully in the natural so you will be more like uh, aware of your physical surrounding so I will put to extreme minus here extreme plus there because I believe there is uh, harmony in that. Now this is not, a, you can read up on all the brain waves, you won't find it. This is through my own analysis and conclusion after uh, research and study. I believe that the visions occur in this three sector. In this three sector. You can have a dream state vision here and at this stage you have both dreams, REM sleep, and close vision, dreams and close vision, where your natural perspective is close up. Alpha is in the middle. This vision here, if you have any visions, it is like a dreamlike vision, dreamlike state. Here at the beta phase, if you have a vision that is here, open vision will be here because you're still able to perceive. And this would be. Uh, an open vision type which is more like a horasis vision now let me add all the biblical words now when you see the range of visions that you can have when you are at beta phase most people are at beta people who find it very hard to see visions are always at the beta phase now I have an instrument uh, given by our elder Colin. I live in Australia, but you remember the little thing that we measure brainwave thing. You you still have that right? Okay, because I still got a program that you added for me, and uh, uh, you're around right next week. Okay, next week. Uh, uh, because I know some many of you disappear in Chinese New Year, they, they disappear into the Ang Pao, into the food section. Uh, some of you, of course, are still fasting, praise the Lord. Uh, if you don't mind bringing that next week, I'd like to measure some of your brain waves next week. So, how you measure? You could actually measure, and you and through practice, you could actually meditate and control your brain wave. To different level because I've been playing with that since the time but I have levy on my shelf in Sydney and uh, um, because I reckon that you have one here so next week uh, please bring that for me uh, the same software right so we can have that and um, so uh, because remember these are training sessions these are training sessions and wh remember again when you're watching a movie you enter the alpha phase without any effort why is it that when people watch a movie, they enter the alpha state? Because you are not doing the thinking. All the thinking is done on, in front of you. You are just absorbing. So remember what the alpha state is? Relaxed body, relaxed mind. And when you are watching a movie, you uh, not, uh, 
n nobody is very tense, right? <laughs> Watch me, they relax, take the popcorn or whatever, even though they are mentally alert kind of thing. So there is quite a range. Remember, I am sure, I am very sure that within each phase, uh, since 7 to 4, uh, there are tiny little differences. I'm sure there are tiny differences between 7, 6, 5, 4. I'm sure. Except that scientists have not gone further. And there are differences between 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. I believe that. So don't just lump the whole thing together because the scientists lump it together. It's just because the scientists you know, are paid only a certain amount of money and they do a certain amount of research and their research has to have some benefits and all those things so they don't go further. For us, we are interested in everything. Uh, even the nuances. And I personally have gone in and tried to understand more, meditate and pray. And I believe that within each stage are sub-stage. Like Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Alpha 4. They are sub-stage. So I believe that watching a movie one is closer to, uh, to 12. Whereas when you are drowsy, it's closer to 8. So within that... So they lump everything together, but I believe there's variation where certain... Now what is this hertz? Hertz are, you could actually hear a sound, a music or anything, when it keep... And the hertz can... Hertz is just how many, how many beats a second. It can be light, like uh, uh, flowing in a light wave. It can be sound waves. It can be anything. So you could hear, and they, nowadays on the internet, they got lots of different things. You could hear, and uh, the, there's a beat that beats between your ears, and, it, and, and the sound is exactly at a certain beat to get your brain into a certain rhythm, kind of thing. That uh, if you understand the different types of vision, now, uh, there are three types of spiritual vision. Close vision, Closed vision, where you, you cannot sense your physical anymore. All you see is the spiritual dimension. All you see is the spiritual. Even you want to see the natural, cannot. All your senses seem to just see the spiritual realm. You lost track of the natural realm. Uh, let me illustrate that from a different... Uh, if I were to have a um, kind of... Uh, uh, this is zero, and uh, this is uh, plus, uh, let's say plus 10, this is minus 10, and uh, if this is your body consciousness, so middle being uh, uh, in between drowsiness, and um, as your consciousness goes into here, it goes into, let's say if the middle here is alpha, alpha, and uh, as you go towards this direction, you will actually hit beta, and then finally gamma. As you begin to reduce, you are moving towards um, theta, and then finally you reach delta. So, can you see, I try to do your consciousness. And uh, when you are having a, uh, when you're having a close vision, it can be anywhere from here. This would be close vision. Where you are not conscious of anything in the natural. Also, it is similar to a dream. The only difference is, a closed vision, you have still a low level of consciousness. You're conscious that you're awake. In a dream, you're not conscious. Thus, since theta is... Uh, okay, I forgot to draw the alpha face here. Theta is uh, between... Uh, between 7 to 4... Here is 
Let's say below 4 would be 3, 2, 1, onwards. I would put close uh, vision to be here. Close vision to be here. You're having a theta brainwave. I will put your dream state closer to here. So now you see on the chart your wavelength and how relaxed you are. When you're having a daydream, drowsy daydream, and uh, a daydream will be in the alpha phase. And when you are having a, a normal vision, an open vision, okay. So I will put your open vision, let me get the thing. So there is open vision, open vision. Now the beta phase, the beta phase, alpha is from 8 to 12. Beta is from 13 to 30. Gamma is 31 onwards. When you are having a beta uh, vision, since from my experience I understand that uh, when you have open vision, you need to be very relaxed still, you know, and, and certain area. Oops, let me use a different color. So it's more distinguishable. Okay, let's use a pink color. Open vision. I will put it closer to 13 because you have you, have, you, you can see the natural, but you're still quite relaxed. So you're still at the borderline quite relaxed. I seldom see where Jesus appeared to someone and you're very tense. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, hear Jesus <laughs> kind of thing. Most people, when you have uh, open vision or whatever, there's a certain relaxation kind of thing. And um, so, there you have it's closer to uh, 13. Which is why, when a person has an accident or a lightning strike you, your brain adjusts a little bit. All he has to do is just change a little bit and your alpha extend a bit to the beta and you still can see the vision. So some brain arrangement. Remember it's all your brain wave patterns. They are there. So we cover close vision, open vision, we cover dreams and uh, then we also cover inner vision or spiritual vision. Now here is the good part. Inner vision or spiritual vision got a wide range. It's not just one. It's a wide range. Like when I say pink elephant, some of your pink elephant are a bit blur. Some of your pink elephant are very clear. Because different range on your inside. So the inner vision or spiritual vision has a very wide range. Now let me give you a color. Choose a nice color. Um, green. Okay. Yeah, I don't have turquoise color. I like turquoise color. Well, let me. So the inner vision, which I got to put the words down again. So there is in between inner vision, inner vision, or spiritual vision, which is what Kenneth Hagin calls it. Spiritual vision, seeing on your inside. And let me use that deep green color. Is in a range. So by color code, you can see the range there. This one relate to here. The pink relates to the pink. And it has a wide range of inner vision. Now, whatever types of vision you have, closed vision, open vision, inner vision, it is not the vision 
that makes the message powerful and important. You can receive a very important message just through almost like an imaginary vision. And Jesus might be talking to you and you can see him very faintly, but it can be a very important message. For example, and you all know about Kenneth Higgin Sr., the ministry, and he's a prophet. And he was the founder of the faith movement and uh, be used by God uh, quite mightily before uh, he went home. Now, one of his best sermons is called How to Write a Ticket to God. In that sermon, the whole sermon he got through a vision of Jesus. And Jesus appeared to him and talked to him. But that vision he has was not a closed vision. Neither was it an open vision. But he saw Jesus. Uh, in different, I, I read that sermon in different contexts. There's one, I think it was published in three, four sections. And one, a little book by itself. But not the little book by itself, another book that described about it. Described the vision when he saw it. And when his eyes were closed, he saw Jesus. And then when Jesus talked to him, he asked Jesus, before, when the Jesus finished talking, and as Jesus left, he asked Jesus, uh, Lord, when I am meditating on the word, I read about a woman with the issue of blood. <clears throat> and I could feel a message coming. I could feel a sermon is coming to me. But I cannot write, get it. Cannot quite catch it. Now that you're here, can you please give me the sermon? <laughs> so he asked that. So Jesus says, okay, write down one, two, three, four. Wow. So then he says, in another different book, he opened his eyes and then he couldn't see Jesus anymore. That means his inner vision. Then he grabbed a piece of pen, uh, pa pencil or paper and then he wrote down one, two, three, four. Then he closed his eyes again, then he saw Jesus. And that's when Jesus gave him the four points of how to write your own ticket with God. And uh, Jesus says, anyone, anywhere practicing these four points can always receive what they want from God. Which is an interesting sermon. Now the whole sermon and the whole vision was a simple inner vision. He has open vision before. He has closed visions before. When his first vision, in, I believe in vision, was a closed vision. He was taken up to heaven. Some visions, he saw open vision. Like when uh, uh, in the chapter where Jesus appeared to him after he anointed his hands and he, and, and he tried to heal a man who couldn't bend and uh, then as a man was walking back Jesus suddenly appeared he saw the man, he saw Jesus that's open vision uh, and then Jesus rebuked him and then in the end he called the man back and got the healing under the chapter if the batch of doubt now that was an open vision so he is a man who experienced open vision closed vision but that particular time when he got the sermon on how to write your own ticket with God, it was an inner vision. He mentioned in one book, when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see Jesus anymore. That's how when Jesus gave him the point, he opened his eyes, he wrote down and he closed. And Jesus talked to him some more. In a sense, it was like an imaginary vision. So do not think that the technical type of vision determines how powerful it is. No, no. Whether you see in your imagination, whether you see a dream, see in a dream, whether you see an open vision, open vision messages are not more powerful than a message you could receive through the inner voice, sometimes without even a vision. Do not equate spectacular with authority. Do not equate that. And, uh, a, a, a message has more authority depending on how much that God is actually speaking something and the urgency of what God is revealing. So the type of how, how you have the vision is a technical part. 
technical parts are not so important. I mean, it's not very important whether I would see a vision and prophesy or whether I speak in tongues and prophesy. A word from the Lord is still a word from the Lord. It doesn't mean if I have tongues and interpretation and there is a prophecy, it's less than a person seeing a vision and prophesy. Please don't do that. Because that is a measurement of fallen humans who think that how something is done uh, uh, makes it more powerful. Then you will be a per- person easy to con. The devil will give you a false vision and you think it's really from God. As we all know, not everybody who dress well, dr- drive well, live in a well-maintained house is necessarily a person who is a good person. You know, some of the good people, they live very humbly. So don't be deceived by the house a person lives in, the car a person lives in, or the type of dress a person has. You don't have to wear Armani to have more authority. And the same foolishness of people. They think when a church is 10,000 members, and another church 1,000, and another church 50, that the 10,000 member pastor got more authority. No such thing. In the sight of God, it's not. Because uh, people like Roland Buck, whose church was, you know, I think it's only about 100 over people, God chose him to bring the message of angels. Remember, he wrote two books, uh, Roland Buck. One is Angels on Assignment, and uh, Fred, Charles and Francis Hunter published a book for him. And uh, another, the man who talked with angels. Uh, Angel Gabriel, uh, Angel Michael, before this move, revealed themselves to him. And even though his church was only 100 something members, his impact on the whole of USA was very great. He had more authority when he speak about that. And in one of his occasions, he was given 60 things to that will happen in his life uh, before he die. So you have it. And so foolish are Christians who... Because everyone has their own calling. Just as you know, there are a lot of people who are called just to, to be educators, teachers and all that. And some of you have grown up under very good teachers, correct? And they inspire you when you were a teenager. You have grown, you become a top businessman, you're a you're, you're hundred times richer than them. But they have a very important role. They're not after money. If they're after money, they might not just be a teacher. They just love to educate children. And they have a calling and a love for kids to make sure the kid is grown up in the right way. So that might be their, their calling. When we are rewarded in heaven, don't think because you're richer, 100 times uh, richer than them, and you live in a better quality uh, uh, house than them, drive a better car than them, that they are lesser than you. As humans, they are playing one of the most important roles, bringing up children and educating children, where parents don't have time to educate children. So we sometimes you know, uh, uh, value things differently. Like for example, Why is it that the pay of a policeman and a soldier is so low compared to an actor and actress who all they do is perform for you and look good in front of you and they pay millions of dollars and every time they act, the only risk they have is the action movie or certain things more dangerous, they might injure themselves. Whereas a policeman and a soldier, every time they go out, eh, they might lose their life and be shot. Why do these people who risk their life get paid so low? Society. Our society. Because our society adulates certain things and we put value on certain things. But I can tell you, not God. Not heaven. So, let's get rid of all these human things that put people into classes and look down on people one of the things we must do when we are born again and become true disciple is everyone is equal. 
And everyone just have their walk and their vocation in life to be who they want to be. So you talk as respectfully to a person working at a counter in a supermarket as much as you talk respectfully to your Prime Minister or your Member of Parliament. Do not have that class thinking in your heart and your mind if you're a true disciple of Jesus. So when we apply same visions and all that, do not start putting classes on the value of thus says the Lord or the word of God delivered because the method of delivery is different. Do not do that. Because sometimes some of the most important things is just a soft voice. Elijah could see vision, could travel in the spirit, call down fire from heaven, but he was a master of listening to the still small voice. Because the still small voice was what led him many times to go to find food in a famine. The still small voice was what told him to go out and stand before the Lord after he was discouraged and he traveled all the way to the mountain, Horeb, and then where there was thunder, lightning, fire, earthquake, and the Lord was not there. It was side effect until the still small voice that he went out. He's not moved by thunder, lightning, earthquake. He's only moved by the voice of God. So, uh, do not confuse spectacular with authority. It is important for us to understand this principle. But here we have outlined for you for the first time where each of those things there. Dream exists there, to, in my personal opinion, towards a lower theta stage. Close vision is, because there is still some level of consciousness, is closer to the theta, uh, higher theta stage. Open vision, your brain is very active. So it's more in the beta, uh, beta stage of uh, brainwave, but it's closer to the alpha, so the closest I can put is 13, 13 hertz. Inner vision and spiritual vision has a wide range. It's in the alpha range, but it can range from 8 to 12, and if it's a level 8, it's very clear. It's almost like, you know how dreams are very clear? Uh, and, and sometimes when you're all night prayer, if it happens to you, you're praying and you enter into very deep, almost dream state but not dream yet. And then because our lights are dim, you can see almost like, like in a dream, you're functioning. And you know dreams are three dimensional now because when you dream, I'm sure all your dreams are full color, right? Anyone just dream in black and white? Okay. <laughs> After I come out, we pray for you. <laughs> so, so your dreams are full color, full smell, full experience. And yet you are actually conscious you're sitting down. So you enter into it for a while. So that's what seeing a vision is like. And so that would be like uh, at 8 hertz in the alpha range. And, um, but at other times it could be about 12 where your brain is quite active and you could see it uh, functioning at that time. Now let me throw in some Greek, Greek words and all those things. Let's look at the book of Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, it talks about the Holy Spirit coming down. And when the Holy Spirit comes down, it says in verse 17, It shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Which is the word horao, which is horasis. Horao is the verb, horasis is the noun. Horasis, a vision. And um, so this one is like the vision comes to you. Horasis. So the Romanized word is here. H-O-R-A-S-I-S, -S, in case you're taking notes, horasis. Then it says, your old man shall dream dreams. And here's the dream, word dream. 
uh, Romanized for you. I don't like this Romanization. Uh, it should be uh, E N U P N I A Z O. Inupniozomai. So you just have to replace the Y with a U. Inupniozomai. That is a verb. And the noun for that is the next word. Inupnion. So the Romanization is E N U. It should not be Y. E N. Because Y is pronounced as I. So it, it would be Inai. You know, that must be an American pronunciation. So when I learned Greek originally, it's the, well, the British style E N U. Enough. And actually, it's an epsilon. See, it's an epsilon. Epsilon, strictly speaking, is a U. So E N U P N I O N. Enough neon. So it's an enough neon dream. In the Greek, there are two words for dream. One is enapnion, here. The other, if you look just a little bit ahead in the uh, Gospel of uh, Luke, oh, the other fast way you can find it, just find any verse in the New Testament on dreams. And you put an asterisk there for the plural. And we ignore the Old Testament first, since we're in the New Testament. You have here... Uh, Joseph having a dream. Come on. Yeah. Joseph having a dream. In Matthew chapter 1, while he thought about putting away Mary, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Now, look at the word dream. Oda. See that? Ona, Romanized. O-N-A-R. So this is Ona in Greek. And um, it's an Ona type of dream. Now, here I put it in your chart for you. And um, let's uh, have, uh, let me see which color to use. I think this blue can come up clear. Okay. So, an owner type of dream is here. Owner type of dream, where it's like REM sleep. REM sleep, an ona type of dream. And in Namnion, which is like a daydream, and just to prove the word, the word uh, in Namnion has been used several times, and it's used for good or bad. It can be good or bad, daydreaming. And there's a context where it's used in a negative sense. Come on. This is slow, my Bible is getting slow. Okay. I wish it's a way to speed it up. Okay, here is the word enapneon. When you look at other passages that use the word enapneon, oh, they didn't put it. Okay, but I know where that is. It's found in the book of Jude. And in Jude, they talk about, in negative sense, um, uh, a dreamer of dreams, you know. The verse 8, the evil people who dream bad things. And they daydream, thinking all the evil they want to do. Uh, look at the word. Is from inapniozomai. So it would be like a daydream. If you check the context, some translators translate it. Likewise, these daydreamers, they defy the flesh. So they are daydreaming. So having proof from God's word that the word inapnion, inapniozomai, which is the verb for it, can be used of a conscious dream. That's why I say old men dream dreams. So it's not the same as an ona dream where you got to fall asleep. It's an inapnion dream. Enapnion dreams are more within this area here. Uh, Enapnion. Now, when you put it on this scale, you can see there's definitely different brain frequencies that are affecting. Because at the alpha state, you're still conscious, but you're daydreaming. You're still daydreaming at, at that level. In Amnion. A horasis vision that you saw, young men should see visions, is usually given in the beta stage. And that takes another work of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, horasis, let me put it in a lower scale here. A horasis vision. You're functioning in the beta stage, you're not daydreaming at all, and you're wide awake. Fully awake, ba -ba -ba, vision comes to you. So there is a horasis in that sense. And um, 
then that covers almost the scale of uh, the area of uh, visualization and things that you can see uh, that are there. Uh, on a different scale is um, this chart. In this chart, you can see the different brain frequency and where the X is, is where we see all the different... Uh, let me make sure that I'm still on the same color. Yes, I am. So, we see that at delta phase, there's nothing. It's just deep sleep. Your body is at rest. At the beta gamma, which is not researched yet, but I believe it's the very opposite of this, it will be highly awake in the physical. You're just tuned to your body, like all athletes, and highly tuned to the body. Only in these three phases do you have the different uh, types of vision. So at the beta phase, you can have the horasis vision. At the deep stage theta, you have the ona dream. At the alpha stage, you have an inapneon. Inapneon. So we put on all your different brain frequencies as to why and how you can train yourself to see vision. Which, as we summarize, we'll go deeper into the second service. Number one, combining scientific knowledge with Bible knowledge. Obviously, your brain wave has to function at the alpha stage to have what I call a daydream. And also, this I would include another area, imagination, visualization. Here you're active. Now let's see whether our facts are still scientifically back up. Looking at this face here, uh, although here, the, his is not put in a systematic area of uh, increasing and decreasing, but looking at it here, can you see the scientific thing? Alpha is imagination, visualization. So, our understanding of biblical one is still in line with the scientific fact that when a person is doing imagination, let's say they're visualizing a pink elephant dancing, Alpha wave. Or yeah, the imagining or visualizing. But this is an active role still in your consciousness, which is uh, different from uh, a theta phase, which in a, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, a, a, del a theta phase. Where's the theta phase? Uh, okay. Uh, it describes here. Oh, here it is. In the theta phase, there could be visions. Remember I talked about closed visions? Closed visions and dreamlike stage. So, there is a different type of vision here. Let me see, where am I? Ah, here. Okay. So here, horasis is open vision. Now, it can also be closed even at this stage, I, I just put bracket. I just said this one can hold horasis. Deep here, close to here can also be horasis. Except this horasis is 100% close. That is there. Give an example in the Bible. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, we have Acts chapter, um, chapter, where is Acts? Okay, Acts chapter 10. Peter, it says here, when he was at a certain house, he went to the house top to pray at the sixth hour, which is 12 noon. He became very hungry and wanted to eat. While they make ready, he fell into a trance. So, the word trance here is ecstasis. Something happened to his mind. Ecstasis. 
and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound in the four corners and these animals coming in and out. This is actually a closed vision. He cannot see. So it's an ecstasis. Here's where I put it. Remember I put here open vision up there. Open vision. If they have a closed vision, it will have to be an ecstasis. A trans-like state. So you got horasis, ecstasis. But here the horasis is hundred percent closed. If you got horasis here, it will be open. And if you have a horasis here, it will be most likely a dreamlike in Abnion, which is there in the Bible. So we put all the different brain frequencies. And uh, to show some examples of Bible people seeing visions or some dreams that come at the owner stage. So when Joseph received a word from the Lord, he was, his conscious mind was completely knocked off. And let's examine why. Why do you think God couldn't bring him some other method? Because his mind was opposed to what God wanted to do. What was he thinking of? He was thinking of how to put away Mary because he don't believe what Mary said that she got a virgin birth. Correct? His conscious mind was opposite from the word. So when your mind is against God's word, but your heart is still good. Your heart is still good, but your, in other words, put it in a very rough language, Mind is bad, heart is good. Now, that is a very contrast person. <laughs> bad in the sense that you're actually going the wrong direction. I mean, if he put away Mary, think about what will happen. The Messiah is inside her, you know. So in a sense, from God's point, you very, very bad. You're trying to put her away. This is divine child. <laughs> Although his heart was good. His intention was good to put her away secretly. But everything his mind was thinking of a way. Thinking of a way. You think God can speak while your mind is opposite? Uh -uh. God has to wait until your mind TKO, knock out. Bang! Then God, angel appear. Ta -da! And he said, You shall not put her away. <laughs> and give all the scolding you want. Because it's very opposite. So God has to speak in Ona. Ona. And. Uh, uh, when I was friends uh, with uh, the, the prophet who had open vision, I noticed one thing. I still all on my record. The things, I mean, if a person have a 24-hour open vision, you think God can speak to him all the time, correct? But I found one thing. God still speak to the person in dreams. And when, you know, I can interpret dreams. So when I see the dreams, all the dreams that God speaks to him are the things that his mind opposes. And I know one true fact. When your mind is already made up and opposed to God wants to do and want to say, although your heart is still okay, good. If your heart is bad, finished, God don't want to speak to you anymore. And your, your heart is still good, God use dreams. God used dreams, which is in line with this principle that the Bible says in the book of Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33. And it says here, God may speak in one way or in another. And these are the words of Elihu. Yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon man, so definitely, eh, tita face. Right? Deep sleep, no more consciousness, tita face. While slumbering on their beds, he opens the ears of man, seals the instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. Actually, it's pride. Lah. Every time we want our own way, eh, 
You can hide your motives. Uh. But I will tell you, the root reason is pride. You think you're so clever, you think you know things yourself, you think you know better than God. Or you have your own mind made up. The root of it is pride. If we learn how to be humble every day, then God can speak. Now all this already got a lot of principles. I better lay down the principles and summarize a few things. Okay, we finish this. Principle number one, we will explore more in the second service. That the uh, heart must always be pure and good. then God can speak. Even if your mind not so good, your thinking not so good, your analysis not good, I believe your heart must be pure and good. And you must still have a certain, I believe you must still have an openness. Openness to God. That means even though you might have decided certain things, your heart is saying, Lord, I really still want your will. I'm doing this because I don't know what else to do. But I really want your will. So let's say it's opposite. So when it's opposite, we know what God does. He will speak to you through a dream. To change your direction of the decision that you have made. Because your heart is pure. Uh, and then, on this other area, uh, your mind might be opposite, your mind really made up opposite direction, the contrast. God will speak to you in a dream. But the interesting thing I found, no visions, because something is preventing the vision, opposing mind. Which brings me to the second principle. If you really want the ability to see visions clearly, filter it nicely, obviously the first thing is 100% surrender. 100% humility. Actually, the point is a humble heart. Because you're looking for a point there. Because if your heart is humble, you're really surrendered. Humble heart. If your heart is humble, and here's the other thing, your mind is also humble. Say, Pastor, we got such a humble mind. Have you not, not known the Bible that there is a, such a thing called humble mind? It's a Greek word called tripoia, uh, tripoia, uh, combined with the word uh, phronio. It's called a humble mind. It's a combination together, a Greek word combination. And uh, you find Paul mentioned about that in the book of Philippians. A humble mind. If your mind is a proud mind, actually pride is both in a heart and a mind. But uh, if your heart is humble, your mind is humble. Uh, Philippians, where are you? Okay, Philippians chapter 2. It says, If there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affliction and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love being uh, out of accord one to another. And uh, so here is uh, being like-minded. And um, let this mind be in you. Oops. Okay. Yeah, phronio. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So he talked about this mind that he wants us all to emulate and all of us to have. Oops, I've turned too far. And um, This, what I call humility of mind, like the Lord Jesus has. He mentioned, Paul has it in Acts, Chapter 20, here is it. In Paul's speech to the Ephesian leaders, he mentioned how he served God with this tripinos type of mind. Let me get you the Greek word. <clears throat> so Paul talks about his testimony of serving God for three years faithfully. 
say, you know, I preach the kingdom of God, I preach, I've done that, where he is. With all humility, here he is. This is a word, very long word. Pai Paiono Fosun. It's a combination of two words. Pai Painos, which is humility. Fronio, which is the word for setting the mind. Combine both become Tripino Frosun. This word is used only a few times. In actual fact, uh, this translation is not so good. They should put humility of mind. It is a humility of the mind. Not just of the heart. The mind must also be humble. Don't, lowliness of mind is a good translation. This is the other occurrence in the Bible. It says here uh, in Philippians 2.3, look at it. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Say, well, how does the mind become lowly? Humble mind. Don't have proud mind. Have a humble mind. And uh, a proud mind knows it all. Humble mind is still willing to learn. Teachable. And um, here's another place. It occurs uh, several times in the Bible, but very important to Paul. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. With all lowliness. Actually, it's lowliness of mind. Same, same big long word. Uh, Tripinos with phronio. And um, then you have in Colossians, uh, it can be false humility, but a kind humility. So, you got the false one here. There's a false lowliness of mind. That means people pretend to be open in their mind, but actually close. But in the same chapter, he says, they should have <coughs> kindness, humility. But this humility is not just taipainos, which is a word for humility. It's taipainofrosun. The next frozen means humility of the mind. And uh, so it's, it's all over in the Bible. And you see as very important, Paul says, part of learning how to be humble is to humble your mind. He says, likewise you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another, be clothed with humility of mind. God receives the proud, gives grace to the humble. So, in our point here, we're talking about humble heart, humble mind. So this is the second point. Humble heart, humble mind. When you have a humble heart and a humble mind, then God can speak in visions, all kinds of visions, and God can speak of visions, and God can speak also in a daydream, in a neon. In a neon dream, where you're still conscious. Apparently, these attributes are important. These attributes are important. This is talking about the, the heart and the mind. So, you have good heart, mind not so good, still can. God will get you to dreams. Because God is better than the pure in heart. He is the pure in mind. So your heart is pure, obviously your mind will be affected and become more pure. But your thinking might still not be so good. And so God can still speak in number one. If you have a humble heart and a humble mind, 100% God can speak easily through you. But as we know, from our knowledge of science, as we apply this into, the, into some of our understanding, one has to enter into a rest state. That means... Remember, relax, uh, you, you are relaxed physically and relaxed mentally. So when you enter into the alpha state, I don't want to put alpha because this, that would be the science point, but this is a biblical point. You have to enter into a rest, spiritual rest. So when you're in a rest state, which affects your physical, so I would say spiritual rest, rest, the affect a physical state of rest, physical and mental. Better put mental too, sometimes people forgot. Physical and mental state of rest. Then, the blessing is on you. Uh, all visions and dreams are easily yours. So these three points are important in order to bring us to the fullness of visualization. And um, so, 
I will try to talk in the second service on principles of how to meditate and bring yourself to different states of consciousness. Uh, you need to know when you when you learn yourself, know yourself. When you know yourself, you actually will know how to bring your consciousness to different levels. That I will leave for the second service. If you cannot attend, don't worry. It will be uploaded up. And then next week, after you go and enjoy your Chinese New Year, or you know, for those of you who don't enjoy Chinese New Year, you no know, happy Chinese New Year to you, Mohan. <laughs> Just enjoy your holiday. And uh, but the next Sunday we will have that instrument to measure your brain wave. And so uh, measure your brain wave. So. Uh, uh, and then show you where your brain waves are, and I can show you a technique how you can instantly change your brain wave to meditation. Hey? Okay? Of course, of course, because you'll be tapping on your conscious, your conscious intelligence, your subconscious intelligence. Your subconscious is more intelligent than your conscious. Because your subconscious is where your Holy, the Holy Spirit and Spirit is there. Praise the Lord. Right, so let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time as we consider your word, as we explore all things in science, explore uh, knowledge and explore your Bible and bring all your word together so that we can train your people into spiritual vision. We thank you, Father, that you continue to help us into different consciousness state and help us to be aware of where we are in our conscious state. We give you all glory, praise and honor that in this end time you want all your people to have open visions and we know that all things are possible with you bless your people and bring them to open visions in Jesus name Amen Praise God, give Jesus a good time offering and God bless you